I'm David Bullock, I'm Head of Species and Habitat Conservation in National Trust and so I'm one of the people who advises National Trust on its care for bats. At the same time as that I need to think about our buildings staff and how they care for bats when we repair and restore buildings like Avebury Manor Barn and we'll see in the barn how we are not just caring for bats, we're actually celebrating the bats there as well as the historic aspects of that wonderful building. The conventional wisdom is that bats live in belfries, but they really don't live in belfries. They don't live in places like this dovecot here. They're both places with pigeons, they're light and they're draughty and cold. What they like is darker places, big spaces, lots of crevices and big roof voids. Places where the temperature's quite stable, but quite often quite warm. Bats are part of our wonderful British fauna, but they've been in decline because of persecution, of habitat destruction, both where they roost and, both where they, and where they feed, and they need protection they're endangered and they've got that protection by law now, which is fantastic. At any one time in the National Trust, a quarter of our buildings are in need of repair and restoration. At the same time, virtually all of those buildings have got some use by bats. We care for those bats and we care for the buildings. And we've got to work together with protected species and also necessary repair and restoration of the buildings. That's a big job but we're doing it. We look for signs of bats outside buildings in several different ways. The first way, best way, is to ask a local and see whether or not they've seen bats coming out of that building. Second way might be to look for signs of the bats themselves, such as their droppings, which stick sometimes to walls and windows. And that's very easy to see if you know what you're looking for. And then the third thing, of course, is if we can have a look inside and see what's going on there. So David, are there procedures that planners must follow in the early stage of a project to better understand bats and to how to protect them? That's a good point. What you said was early stages, and that's what's really critical. If we've got bats and we've got buildings that need repairs and restorations, we need to make for planning at a very early stage not least because we might need to get bat experts in, we might need to apply for licenses to disturb bats before we can do the repairs and restoration. Our general managers need to know the best times to do works on the buildings that need repairs and restorations where there are bats. General managers need to commission building surveyors and conservationists to determine what needs to be done in terms of repairs and restoration. They need to consult back consultants and experts to find out when's the best time to do the necessary works, such as re-roofing, or in the case of this wonderful barn, uh, a re-thatching, for example, or pointing up walls, repairs to walls, and also replacing weatherboards. Most ordinary buildings you would not see bats in, even if they were there because they're in the roof void or at the top of the wall in a crevice. You might see them flying out of the building. If we think we've got bats in buildings, how do we know that? How do we know they're not mouse droppings? We do the crumble test. It's also called the finger and thumb test. Get one of the droppings between your finger and thumb. If it crumbles up into powder, it's going to be a bat dropping. If it's solid as a rock, it's most likely to be a mouse dropping. Because bats are protected species um, and we're not allowed to disturb them intentionally without going on checks and things. So before any work's done in the museum or anything like that, the bats are taken into consideration. And also in the wider landscape, we consider the bats before we do any work on trees or anything like that. So the main place we know that we've got bats in Avery is in the Bar Museum area. And they're spotted throughout the village, so they may be in other buildings, but we just don't know. I think the major thing is just to look out for them, um, so look for any droppings that might be on the ground. Um, also, if you can be around in the dark, that's a good idea at dusk, so you can see them coming out of buildings. And to think about any of the surrounding landscape around, so such as trees, so they might use them um, as cracks and crevices for roosts as well, and also hunting grounds, so consider that too. People will ask in the museum about bats and the visitor services team will share the knowledge there, and there also are some signage in there about them. 
Um, we've also done bat walks in partnership with the Marlborough Downs Space for Nature group and Wiltshire Council. And this year we're also planning on doing some smaller events to raise the awareness of bats as well. We are the National Trust. We're interested in plants, animals, buildings, landscapes, and we care for bats in our buildings at the same time as we care for those buildings. And that's where our building surveyors come in because they are the ones at the sharp end having to deal with repairs and restorations at the same time as caring for bats. And we can work with building surveyors as nature conservationists to make that happen. If you want to find out more information about bats at the national level, go to the Bat Conservation Trust website. Within the National Trust, go to our ACORN pages that deal with nature and also with buildings and you'll find lots of good useful information there.